Hello, this is Prabhat and this is my mini project presentation for the course Deep Learning Theory and Applications taken by Dr. Ramakrishna Gorti. The project title is Deep Reinforcement Learning for Image Restoration. The reference paper I have used for this project is called Crafting a Toolchain for Image Restoration by Deep Reinforcement Learning. This paper has been published in 2018 by people from Sense Time Joint Lab from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. The outline of the presentation is as follows. I will introduce the problem statement and then talk about image restoration and various approaches for the same. Then I will talk about RL Restore, which is the algorithm proposed in this paper and the advantages it possesses. Then I'll talk about the ideas behind this algorithm and briefly introduce reinforcement learning, a concept that is fundamental to the working of RL Restore. Then I will talk about the components and working of RL Restore and how this model is trained. Then I will briefly look upon the implementation details and conclude by stating the results. So the problem under consideration is image restoration. It has a variety of applications that include recovering old images, removing blur from images. It is also used widely in the field of biomedical imaging. So what is image restoration? It's the operation of taking a corrupt or noisy image and estimating the clean and original image from it. Image restoration can address different kinds of degradations, which include deblurring, denoising, or correcting distortions from camera image focus. So this is an example of image restoration. On the left, we have the degraded image, whereas on the right, we have the restored image. We can think of image restoration as follows. On the left, we see an image f of x, y. When it passes through a degradation function and some noise is added to it, we get a distorted image g of x, y. And this degraded image, when we pass through a restoration filter, we can get f hat of x, y, which is close or equal to this f of x, y, which is the original image. This restoration, however, is something that we need to find. There are a variety of approaches for image restoration. The conventional restoration method is to find the inverse function of the degradation function, as we have seen previously. We find the restoration filters transfer function in order to restore the image. To use the conventional restoration methods, however, we are required to find the degradation function, which can be computationally intensive. An alternative approach is a deep learning method where we use convolutional neural networks to perform image restoration. We can use small CNNs for performing particular tasks or we can also use deep CNNs for performing multiple tasks in one go. This is one example of a deep neural network that can address multiple distortions at once. The drawback of using deep CNNs for restoring images that underwent multiple distortions is that they are computationally intensive. So what if we can use a toolbox of specialized small CNNs that can intelligently pick appropriate CNNs from a toolbox to successfully restore the image? So this is where the RL restore method comes in. RL restore is an image restoration algorithm that consists of two components. One is a decision-making agent, whereas the other is a toolbox that contains small specialized CNNs that each perform a particular kind of restoration. This decision-making agent is trained using reinforcement learning to decide which tools to pick and which sequence of tools to pick given an input image. The advantages of this algorithm is that it can handle multiple types of distortions like the deep CNN does. And the decision making is transparent because we know which tools are being used. Using the decision making agent that is trained using reinforcement learning removes the need of using large CNNs. And it is also computationally very efficient compared to these large CNNs. We can see that it takes 82.2% fewer computations as a single large CNN to get the same performance. The RL Restore contains two main components a toolbox of multiple CNNs, each trained to specialize in one particular deformation, and a decision-making agent that is used to pick an appropriate sequence of tools from the toolbox 
given the input image. There are a few challenges that must be overcome to make RLB store work properly. Firstly, it's important to understand that the degree of restoration matters. Meaning if the noise is too much, we should use a CNN of a larger depth to restore the image. If the noise is small, we can use a smaller CNN as well. But it's important that we use the CNN of an appropriate depth. For this reason, the toolbox contains CNNs of different depths for the same kind of degradation. For example, a three-layered CNN and an eight-layer CNN are used for deblurring. When using a toolbox of tools for image restoration, the sequence of tools that are picked, which is the tool chain, and the kind of tools that are picked are very important. To train an agent to pick the right kind of tool chain appropriately for an input image, we treat the decision-making problem as a Markov decision process and we use deep reinforcement learning to train the agent. From this, we can see that choosing the appropriate tools will result in very different results. The kind of tools used and the degree of degradation, both of them play a very important role in picking the right tool chain. Another challenge that we face is the middle state problem. When dealing with an image that has multiple distortions, we encounter a situation where we have to deal with an image that is being restored. And these tools that are highly specialized to take care of one particular kind of noise are unfamiliar with the middle state of an image that is being restored. To address this issue, a joint training algorithm is used in RL Restore, which we'll talk about in the later slides. To understand more about RL Restore, let's quickly look at what reinforcement learning actually is. So in reinforcement learning, we formulate a learning problem as a Markov decision process or an MDP. An MDP essentially contains an agent, which is a decision making agent. And this agent interacts with the environment by performing certain actions. And the agent's actions changes the state of the environment. The agent has a policy through which its actions are governed and the agent also receives a reward depending upon the transition from one state to another. So this picture clearly depicts a Markov decision process. Here is an agent whose action influences the environment and this environment changes the state. This change of state is observed by the agent and a reward is received by the agent depending upon the change state. The problem that reinforcement learning tries to solve is an optimization problem in which the agent must learn an optimal or a nearly optimal policy that maximizes the reward function. Meaning the agent should change its policy such that it receives maximum long term rewards. This brings the question, how do we calculate the long term reward? And this is where the Q function comes in. The Q function gives the expectation value of future reward given the state and action at current time step t. We want to find the optimal Q function which gives the maximum expected reward and that can be obtained by using the Bellman optimality equation as shown in the bottom right. Note that the optimal Q function is the Q function that gives the highest expected reward. We can use a deep neural network to learn the Q function and the deep Q learning algorithm utilizes this exact approach. We give the current state or observation as input to a deep neural network and we get Q values for all the possible actions as the output. This equation gives the weight update for the deep neural network that approximates the Q function. We can see that this part is the Bellman equation that we have seen earlier. By subtracting it from the current Q value, we get this loss. And this loss, when multiplied with the learning rate and the current gradient, we get the weight update. Now with that understanding of reinforcement learning and the deep Q learning algorithm, let's look at the components of RL Restore in a bit more detail. Firstly, we can see that the input image is being given to a feature extractor 
This feature extractor is a convolutional neural network that takes in an input image and gives out a 32 dimensional feature vector. We also have a one hot encoder that gives a value vector as the output. The value vector and the feature is concatenated and given as input to the LSTM and the output is in fact the Q value. Based upon the Q value, we can determine which action to take and this action is given to the toolbox. The toolbox then picks the appropriate tool and uses it on the input image to give a fully or partially restored image as the output. And this process repeats until a satisfactorily restored image is achieved. Here we have few more details about the components of RL Restore. We can see that the feature extractor is a four layer CNN and the one hot encoder takes an n plus one dimensional input and outputs a dim n dimensional vector. The vector represents the previous action taken and the first vector is the zero vector. The LSTM is the approximation of the Q function and takes the concatenated input of the feature extractor and one hot encoder. The toolbox contains the small CNNs that are used for the restoration process and depending upon the output of the LSTM, an appropriate tool from the toolbox is picked for restoration. Here we can see that the LSTM gives a stop signal as its output and when that happens, we reach the final time step T and no tool from the toolbox is picked and the input image is decided to be the fully restored image. This is how the RL restore algorithm works. So now comes the question, how do we train the algorithm? We must understand that we must train the tools in the toolbox and the decision making agent separately. Then we perform fine tuning using a joint training algorithm to make the model more robust. When training the toolbox, each tool is trained on a specific kind of distortion. In RL Restore, we have tools for deblurring, denoising and JPEG artifact reduction. Note that the mean squared error is used as the loss function. Coming to the RL agent, note that we use the PSNR metric as the reward function. We train two parallel networks to stabilize training. The value functions for calculating the losses are obtained from these two networks. We also use a replay memory buffer and we train using episodes that are randomly selected from this buffer. To address the middle state problem that we have mentioned before, we come up with two solutions. We add some Gaussian noise and JPEG compression to all the training data to improve the robustness of the model. We also use joint training to fine tune the tools after they have been trained so that they can deal with the middle state better. Let's look at this joint training algorithm in little more detail. In this algorithm, for each tool chain in a batch, we pass the distorted input image forward to get a restored result it plus one. Then we compute the loss and we back propagate the gradients. Within a batch, these gradients are accumulated and an average of this gradient is used to update this tool. And this process is conducted again and again for few iterations. After fine tuning the tools in the toolbox using this joint training algorithm, the training is complete. Now let's get into some implementation details. The dataset that has been used for experimenting with this is the DIB2K dataset. The images have been cropped into sub images so that we obtain a total of 250K training images and 3.5K testing images. Given below are the hyperparameters for training the tools, training the agent, and the final fine tuning algorithm. These are the quantitative results seen on the synthetic data. The clean images from the dataset are distorted and passed through the RL restore algorithm to obtain the restored image. The restored image and the original image are compared and the PSNR and SSI metrics are obtained using both these images. We can see that the RL restore algorithm performs well, especially for moderate and severe distortion. We can also see that the RL restore algorithm performs well on real world images. These are the references for my presentation. Thank you.